successful, distinguished, loyal. Samara began as a decorated Ivy League athlete, a two-time All-American at 10. He finished runner-up in the decathlon at the 1971 NCAA Championships and won five individual titles at the prestigious Penn Relays. Samara set an American record in the Penn Decathlon in 1974, and two years later, competed for Team USA in the decathlon at the 1976 Montreal Olympic Games. He returned to the Ivy League in 1979 as head coach of the Princeton University men's track and field program, a position he's held for almost four decades and counting. Since 79, the Tigers have won 41 Ivy League Hefts titles. 20 of those are from indoor track, 17 from outdoor, and four from cross country. Princeton dominated the Ivy League with Samara in charge of both the cross country and track and field programs in 1997 and 1998 particularly. In those years, the Tigers won back-to-back -back triple crowns, sweeping titles in cross country, indoor track, and outdoor track in the same season. Samara teams also swept the indoor and outdoor crowns in 2011, 2012, and 2015 to help Princeton complete three more triple crowns. Under Samara, the Tigers have combined to win 429 Ivy individual and relay titles. 229 of them undercover, and an even 200 outdoors. Princeton can boast of success on the national level, too. Samara's athletes garnering a total of 74 All-American honors in track and field, three more in cross country. The Tigers also claim four national titles with Samara at their helm. Tora Harris swept the NCAA high jump crowns in 2002. Don Cabral won the steeplechase in 2012. And the following year, Samara's crew won the DMR. The Ivy League is excellence, integrity, and tradition. The triple crown of Samara's legacy. He says, quote, I just love coaching. I love getting up every day, getting into the office. The challenge of coaching is something that keeps you young. He is 2017 USTF CCCA Hall of Fame inductee, Fred Samara. all the people here. I was talking to Sam Seans, he says over 1,500 people here. And to echo what was said before, to see what this organization has become over the years has been remarkable. It's really an honor to be here with the other five inductees and to be in the 2017 Hall of Fame class. It's really an honor to be amongst all the great, great coaches, the legendary coaches that preceded us in the Hall of Fame. As it said in the vid video, I can't wait to get up every morning to get to the office and coach. I'm not crazy about the office, but I love coaching on the field, and it's just a great, it's a great thing. You know, I'm so appreciative to be an athlete, a former athlete, and a coach in what I consider to be the greatest sport, track and field. I also want to recognize and congratulate all the coaches that are in attendance here. You know, I have so much respect for everybody in this audience because I know what everybody has to go through every day coaching all the athletes day in and day out uh, all year long. So it's a tremendous. So congratulations to all of you. Um, during my career as a coach and an athlete, I've been truly blessed and helped and especially mentored by some of the greatest athletes and coaches our country has ever known. It was certainly their kindness and generosity that helped me uh, make me the athlete I was, uh, the man I became, and the coach I am today. You know, the interesting thing you'll find that the athletes and coaches who have been most successful in our sport are the ones, the, the men's and women that really offer the most help and guidance. So when I was younger, it basically started with a coach when I was about 14 years old. His name was S.C. Fleetwood. This was a small, frail old man. He was 82 years old, and he was about five foot seven. He had gray hair. If he weighed 130 pounds, it was amazing. He was a former pole vaulter back in the late 18, 18, like 1889, 1890. And he would come to my local high school and he would coach anybody that was there. And that just 
meant so much to me that this older guy just loved the sport so much and it just stuck with me. And then when I moved on to the University of Pennsylvania, I had probably my biggest mentor who was Coach Er Moon Munshine. And Moon was really one of a kind. Uh, he was an unbelievable coach. He's great for uh, really getting the best out of his athletes. And many of you may know him, the older coaches. He certainly could tell many, many jokes, which are always dirty, that's for sure. And actually, I just saw his son, Brian. I was having him come up here and actually tell some of the jokes because he knows them very well. But Moon was amazing. And I have to say that I really tried to emulate him in coaching. But when I told him I wanted to be a coach, he said, Fred, you're going to take the vow of poverty. So don't do that. But, you know, because I had a Wharton degree from Penn. But just like some of the other coaches here, I really always wanted to be a coach, even when I was younger. So SC Fleetwood and Moon and some of the other people really made an impact on me. After college, I moved to San Jose, California, where I really was truly, truly blessed to work with and, and be coached by and helped by some of the greatest athletes that uh, were, were ever in our sport. It was always my dream to go to San Jose and when I walked on that track, it was just a miracle. I was just in, in heaven. That was Speed City, but it was also a great place to do the throws. And there was Matt Wilkins, John Powell, uh, Al Fjordback, and just to name a few. And they would go out of their way to help me. And some of the, it was just like a technique film every day, just watching these guys. And uh, it was just incredible. But more importantly, they offered tips and suggestions about how to train and compete, and they just really took an interest in me. And for guys of that quality, it was just an amazing thing. Um, so as I mentioned before, some, the, the great coaches are really so generous with their time and are very helpful. I want to tell you a little story. So a group of us, our Catholics were traveling back from a meet in Sacramento, and we stopped at our rest stop to get some dinner. And so at the end, the waitress, we asked the waitress for the check. And she says, no, no, it's already taken care of. And so we said, well, who took care of it? And she pointed to this gentleman walking out the door. And it was Jim Santos from Hayward, who's a Hall of Fame member. So I walked up to Jim and I said, Jim, you paid for our check? He said, yes. I just wanted to take care of you guys, and you guys were doing a great job training, and I just wanted to you know, really help you. And that just stayed with me as, as a way that we should all pay it forward and take care of people and really care about them. So I like to use Yogi Berra, a great baseball player, quote sometimes, and one of the things he said, among others, is that you can learn a lot by watching. And so I've had a real privilege in my both athletic and coaching career. I've had the privilege of watching Mel Rosen coach the 1992 Olympic team. The way Dean Hayes, in his easy coaching style, coached the 1987 World Championship team. The way Steve Simmons would be so organized as a head manager of the Olympic team. How one of my other mentors, Larry Ellis, would conduct himself with incredible style and grace. He was a true gentleman. I've seen Al Catello, 50 years in our sport, display the fire and enthusiasm of a youngster. I've heard the loud, booming voice of Frank Gags Gagliano at me. That's inspiring. You better run fast when you hear Gags' voice, I'll tell you. I've seen the incredible, the incredible technical expertise of Tom Tillett. And for me personally, the kindness of Bernie Wagner, Jimmy Carnes, Roy Gruyek, Tom Jones, and Joe Vigil, just to name a few. Of course, I need to thank so many people, starting with my dad, who brought me to the first USA Russian meet at Franklin Field. That was really a great experience. But right after that meet, I went home to our house and I tore down, my mom didn't like this, I tore down some curtain rods from, from, from the, uh, house. I took some nails and I nailed it in for pegs. And I went to the local store, the rug store, which at that time they put bamboo 
poles inside of the rugs to keep them straight. So I went in the backyard and I dug up the, the grass. I gotta tell you, my parents weren't happy about that. But then I started pole vaulting. And I think at that time, I cleared six feet. So my dad came out and said, that was pretty good. Why don't you keep doing it? Don't worry about the grass. So, but that was great. And I certainly owe a lot to my dad taking me to meets and things like that. But to the rest of my family, I owe so many thanks. And they're here today. Uh, my son, Ben, and his wife, Lauren, my sister and her husband, Michael, and of course, my wife, Lorraine, which I'll speak about. Believe it. I have to thank them for their support, uh, tremendous support, especially in, after 1972 when I got hurt at the trials and my goal of making it like the team was crushed. But they stood by me and encouraged me for four more years and they helped me fulfill my goal, uh, a lifetime goal of making the team. Uh, of course, I need to thank Princeton because I've been in thorn on their side for 40 years. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it's been a great ride there, and Chris is a wonderful place. And uh, I like to give a—it's not in my talk, but I wanted to give a shout out to the Ivy League. It's a great community of coaches. I think we all get along by and large. We all want to beat each other, just like some of the other coaches said. But it's a great, great group of coaches. And I'd like to especially thank Peter Farrell, who was a coach of Princeton for 39 years as a women's coach, and we we were together for, as I said, for 39 years which must be a record for two coaches to be together. Um, you know, it wasn't mentioned in the video, but I have to give a shout out, and again, congratulations to my best friend, Harry Merrick. So I'd like to congratulate you. <laughs> you know, Harry, your friendship over the years has meant so much to me. And what we've accomplished with the Visa of the Catalan team is legendary. And the other thing about the Visa program is, the number of coaches that came out of the visa program has been incredible. So many coaches around the country were part of that program. Uh, it, it's just been, just been unbelievable. Um, so finally, I'd like to thank Lorraine, my wife for 43 years. I owe it all to you. So when we moved to Florida, I just want to tell you something about Lorraine. She worked as a physical therapist at the maximum security prison in Stark, Florida. And she set up the first PT department there and she worked with uh, all these pr maximum security prisoners. And she came down at home the first couple of weeks and she says, you know, I'm dealing with this guy. And he said, uh, when he gets out of prison, he's gonna kill you. <laughs> Kill her, not me. Uh, but, uh, so when we moved to San Jose, she worked as a physical therapist again. But I had some part-time jobs too as a struggling athlete. So I passed out flyers at the local college. I worked at McDonald's. I burned my fingers turning the hamburgers. That was the hardest job, I want to tell you. I sold these things called rainbow vacuum cleaners. But I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say it. Pointing to my group. The only vacuum cleaner I ever sold was to Bruce Jenner and his wife, Christy. <laughs> I quit the company right after that. <laughs> they were really good vacuum cleaners, by the way. The final job I had was this place called the House of Hatch Covers, where they took these big pieces of wood from the boats and they made these wonderful tables and stuff like that. But I was there one night and this guy was trying to sell this uh, table to a guy and he started asking me all these questions and he says, you don't really know anything about this, do you? I said, no, I'm a struggling athlete. I'm just trying to get some money so I can train. He bought the table. <laughs> so let's see, I'm almost done here. So in conclusion, I believe a great coach, whether you're young or older, produces champions on the field. But the most important thing we do is nature. Do, what's the word, right? Nurture. Nurture. Thank you. <laughs> she helped me write some of this. <laughs> <laughs> we nurture athletes 
who have great integrity and character. And as educators, that's really the most important thing. Again, this is an amazing honor for me. Thank you so much. And I hope I was a good actor like you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>